For this particular video, I'm just going to go through an example of working with some data in R. Um, this is an example data set that I have not worked with before, so we'll see how this goes. Um, it is from the New York Times, and their data sets tend to be really nice and pretty close to tidy or tidy already, so hopefully that'll work out okay. Um, so this is from the New York Times. It's from their COVID-19 data, and I have worked a little bit with some of their other products in this particular um, uh, repository, but if you go to github.com, New York Times has its own handle there and its own kind of page there. And then this is COVID-19 hyphen data, if you would like to go and exclude this data yourself. Um, this may have changed some from the time that I record this to the time that you look at this, because I think they are updating this uh, fairly, fairly frequently. What I want to look at today is these excess deaths. So we can click on that, and I think this is really interesting. If you want to find out more about it, you can go into the README and it describes it. But the idea that they're doing here is they're not just taking um, kind of like laboratory confirmed deaths from COVID. Instead, they're taking all of the deaths that happen and comparing it to some baseline. So in some cases, this is for the same time of the year in previous years. Um, I think we'll have to look as we go through. I think there's some different baselines that different countries do when they're doing that. But the idea here is that there might be deaths not just from the actual virus itself, but also from the way that that kind of like uh, reduces capaci capacity at hospitals or maybe prevents people from see seeking treatment for other things. And um, this is particularly interesting for me because I do a lot of work with climate related disasters with things like heat waves and tropical cyclones. And for the tropical cyclones in particular, we look a lot at these different health outcomes that might be caused by kind of indirect pathways. So not the initial forces of the storm only, but also things like power outages or reduced um, ability to kind of like get medication or, or get hospital care or things like that. So there's some information as we scroll down and include some information about the way that the status set up. And then also they include um, the methods that they used for getting this, for calculating expected deaths so that they could get these excess deaths. And then the sources, and these are all different for each of the different countries because um, the collection of this type of vital statistics data tends to be country by country or sometimes even state by state. So if we go up to the top of this, you can see in addition to this readme file that has all the information we were looking at right here, there's deaths.csv. So we can go in and take a look at that. It's probably gonna be pretty big. Uh, so we've got country here. That's certainly something we could use for filtering or faceting. They've got a frequency, a start date or, and an end date. And so for these that are weekly, that's gonna give the kind of boundaries for the week. Uh, year, month, and week of year, the number of deaths, number of expected deaths, and then the number of excess deaths. And then here there's some information about the baseline. So this is what they're using, I would imagine, to calculate these expected deaths. So then they can make this comparison with the deaths that, that were actually observed at that time and do this comparison of excess deaths. All right, so let's take a look at this in R. We can go to raw, and if you wanted to, you could download this and bring it in to R to save it to use later, but also we could just look at this directly. We can uh, read directly from these online pages by treating this path to its location on somebody else's server just as the file path. So uh, let's go in and make sure that you have tidyverse loaded. And then we'll do read CSV and put in that long name. All right, and just to make this a little bit tidier, I'm gonna wrap that in paste zero so that you can see here, here's my 80 character limit and we're definitely past that. So we'll break this up with paste zero so now you can see it kind of compactly on one line. So let's see if that looks good. Okay, that looked like that worked okay. We're getting in this ca those column names. It looks like that was just on the first line. So all of that is looking pretty good. All right, um, to explore this a little bit, it might be helpful to pull out just one country and kind of build up a little bit of stuff based on that. And then we can expand out 
and look at other things. Uh, the other piece I might want to look at right now is just what we have all of these in it in as in terms of the, the data type. So all of these are numeric. We've got that double, so that's a double floating point. These, it has already brought in as a date, which is wonderful. Those really are dates, and that's how we want to work with this. So that's great. It's treating the frequency as a character, but we could maybe explore and see what different types of frequencies are there. And then place name and country, both of those are as characters, and that should work just fine. All right, um, so let's do this as x stuff maybe. All right. If I were working with this for real, I might explore some of these sections where it looks like it's failing to parse some of the information. So that might, that might be things like, like dates where it was expecting dates, or it might be cases where otherwise there's a row that's kind of different from what it was expecting based on the beginning. Where all of these are down at the end, it looks like maybe they have some information printed at the end um, of the data frame that's coming in for that. So I guess we could actually check tail and see if this looks like it's an okay data set from there. Yeah, it doesn't look like we're really getting into anything that looks too bad down there. So I think we'll be okay for right now, but um, that would be something to keep an eye on. And clearly we've got some stuff here where we don't have the dates, we just have the year and the month. And that makes sense, I guess, because the frequency is monthly. All right, let's see which countries we have. So we can do the data frames, and then we can use that pull function. This pulls out one column as a vector and do it with country. So this is what we it would look like if we did it just and left it at that but we can do unique as well and this will pull out all of the separate ones so we can see which countries we have there and um maybe let's work let's see if we can pick one let's do united states i'm just more familiar with that data right now so let's check out and do x stuff all right so again if it looks like this and we want to filter down to just one country, we'll do that with filter. And then we'll do country and the double equals in the United States. All right, so now we're down to just 77 rows. It looks like this is weekly. We could double check that if we wanted to with doing a frequency, sorry, pull frequency. And then we can look at what unique values exist for that. It's just weekly, so it looks like all of this data is in that format. And if we wanted to, we could do um, the summary function just to get kind of an overview of what this looks like. So um, we've got some missing values for sure for the start date and the end date and the year. For some reason, we don't have any for the month. And then we've also got some missing values for expected deaths and excess deaths. And this is the same number, so I'm guessing that these are probably things that were happening around the same time. So I think the next thing that I want to do here, maybe, uh, let's see if this is US stuff. Um, I think it might be helpful if we look at the number of deaths and do it by the, the, maybe let's do it by the end date of the week. And just look at a plot of that to get an idea of the ranges that we have and how that's evolving. So we can pipe that right into ggplot. And in this case, we're gonna do that X is this end date. And that's already in a date format, so we don't have to change anything there. And then Y is the deaths. And then let's do, uh, we could do, we could try a GM line. See if that looks like it works. Okay, great. So we have this pattern here. Interestingly, we kind of have like numbers going down at the end. I wonder what's going on there. Sometimes you might not have all the data in at the very end period, but we clearly have some evidence that we had a peak here. All right. Um, so the next thing that we might want to do with that is let's maybe take the same look at those expected depths. 
All right, so for that, we're seeing some evidence of it going down. Yeah, I'm guessing that at certain points in this, that maybe there is some missing data, but some of this as well will be from these seasonal patterns we have. It, it tends to happen that deaths are lowest in the summer, and then we've got these higher values in the winter. Um, so some of this pattern may be from that. And then I guess we can look at just the excess, and these are gonna be driven maybe more by COVID. So we're seeing those pretty clear patterns there. All right, so I think the next thing I might wanna do is to take the number of total deaths and show them on the same plot, but with a different color as these expected deaths so that we can kind of get that idea of how things during the year actually differed from what we were expecting. Um, so to do that, it's probably going to be most helpful first if we take this data set and we select out just the things we actually want to use. So let's do select and let's do, you're doing this by end date, I think, so we'll keep that. And then let's also do these deaths, the actual deaths, and then we'll do the expected deaths as well. All right, so this is gonna give us just a smaller data set that looks kind of like this. And now if we wanna plot them on the same uh, ggplot, what we can do is pipe in, and we'll just put the x variable in this ggplot part right now because I'm gonna add two lines and I'll add one line that shows one thing and one line that shows the other. So uh, let's do end date here and that'll be the same for both of our lines. But then we'll do one line where we do that the y value is depth, and then one line where it's the expected depth. Okay, and now we can do different colors for those. Maybe we can do red, and then maybe gray. Okay, so now we can see this difference between what we saw during this year and what we would have expected for each period of the year based on previous years. So now maybe we want to go back instead of having just one country, maybe let's get all of the countries and then facet by country because we've got several countries so we could look at that. And then we'll need to make sure we keep the select at this point as well. So again, if we go back to this, uh, country does not exist. Oh, I put county instead of country. All right, let's take a look at that. Okay, and maybe we need to filter to, to just the ones where we've got weekly data. So let's look at that. We had this frequency. So let's filter first and do that frequency is weekly. Because it looked like some of those countries, maybe we don't have these start and end dates if it's just monthly. So if we look at that, okay, if we wanted to, we could do a summary right here just to check. We do have some missing values. We'll have to see how those play out as we're going through. And we have some missing values for dates as well. Um, so we'll we would maybe want to check that if we were doing this for, for a real project. But I, don't think that'll mess anything up too much right now. All right, so now we can do our plot. And the other thing I'm going to want to add at this point is to facet it. Oh. So I'll do a wrap because we've got several different countries. And this way, when it runs out of a line, it'll go down to the next one. I want to do that by country. And let's just see what it does by default. Okay, great. So we've got all of our different countries now, and you can see that we've kind of like, we've got them alphabetically, and we've also got it so that it's got the same X and Y range for all of the countries. And that might be a little bit tricky because in this case, um, we've got very different baseline levels for the different countries. So like United States is way up here, or not even baseline levels, just the ranges of, of these values. The other thing that's going on here is it looks like we've got some data from a while ago. So in some cases, we've got data for several years. So let's maybe filter and make sure that the date is from January 1st and later as well. So 
So let's do filter, and then we'll use that again. It's end date is greater than or equal to, and we need to put this in a date format, but let's say here, so the year is 2020, 01, 01. So January 1st, 2020, that looks like. Oh, we need to load Libra Day. That's not part of the default tidyverse, I don't think. All right, that's looking a little bit better. So now we certainly have just this year where we can look at that a little bit more closely, but I really think we need to fix this idea that we've got different scales for this. So in this facet, what we can do is we can do scales equals free Y. We want to free this Y axis so it's different for every country. Let's see if I spelled that option right. Yes, okay, there we go. All right, so we've definitely got some interesting uh, patterns going on where there are some clear peaks, it looks like, where we were well above what was expected. A lot of these places, we do see that pattern where the, the expected number of deaths was higher in the winter and then was kind of like going down over that first peak that we experienced in a lot of places. Uh, we've got different amounts of data for different places. So we've got um, just part of the year for Mexico compared to the full year for other places. Um, all right. And we've got maybe some reporting delays in some places. So like Colombia and Ireland, we're not all the way up to date with everything. Oh, and then some of the South America countries, we've got kind of the inverse of that expected pattern where it's in July, which is their colder season that we're seeing an expected baseline that's a little bit higher. So the next thing that we might want to do here is we might want to take a look at reordering these. So right now, uh, we've got it alphabetically. So Austria, Belgium, Brazil, and so on. We could think about what might be a useful way to reorder this. And maybe we want to take the date that we had the peak value and kind of order by that. Um, and for some places, the peak of this total number of deaths, it's going to be earlier. But for a lot of places, it's going to be kind of lined up. So let's see, we could think how to do that. I think we might need to do a mutate first. So let's see, at this point, we've got country, end date, deaths, and expected deaths. So we could do group by maybe and group by the country. and then do a mutate to add on a new column. And for this new column, let's do peak date. Equals end date where expected deaths equals the maximum of expected deaths. Let's see if that's looking anywhere. Like what we want. Okay, so the error occurred. Oh, in some cases, we're going to have two of those. So in other words, we might have a tie. So let's try taking out just the first value. All right, so this looks kind of convoluted, and there would be a few different ways to do this. But essentially here, I'm saying take the value of end date, and I'm using that kind of logical expression on this side, actually inside the square brackets to pull that out. So let me think, this is using a little bit base art. Let me think if there's a way that I could do this in a more tidy verse type way. So let's do, let's do it with a few steps. So max, so let's see, peak death maybe. Oh, and maybe I don't, maybe I wanna do this with deaths rather than expected deaths as well. So we wanna fix that anyway. Okay, so let's do the peak deaths just as that maximum of the total number of deaths is what we wanted to do there. Okay, let's try doing that step. All right. And now let's do that peak date is where the, it is the end date 
I think I am going to have to do the square brackets for this one with the logic inside, but at least it's a little bit shorter now. So it's the end date where death equals that peak death. So that looks like that worked. All right, so we can do a few things with this. And the first thing that we'll do is we'll use it to arrange these other factors. So in this case, what we can do is we can come down to where we do the facet wrap with country. And we can actually do fact re, I think it's reorder. A lot of times I have to look this up. Okay. So we want to do the one where we can do it by another. Yes. So this is taking one column and re reordering it based on another column. Or one vector and reordering it with another vector, which when you're working in a pipeline in tidyverse is going to let you do those vectors as columns that are in the data frame. So we're going to reorder the country and we'll base it on this peak date. So now when we look at it, it's not alphabetical anymore. Instead, it's taking the day of this peak of observed deaths. And so we can see that we've got these countries here where the highest number of observed deaths was still kind of following that seasonal pattern rather than there being this huge spike specifically um, in the COVID peak area, I guess. Um, Denmark, which it looks like had some really odd patterns, um, where things were actually kind of low for a little while. But then we can see that we've got a lot of these European countries that had a spike in deaths maybe around the same time. And then going down later, we can see some of these South American countries are all kind of grouped together down here with a, with a, a spike in total number of deaths that happened a little bit later. All right, the other thing that we could do, we might want to take this uh, this peak, peak date. And again, this is for all deaths. So for some places, it looks like that's dominated a little bit more by seasonal patterns. But we could group by country. And instead of doing the mutate, we could do summarize. All right, and that's giving us this information for each country of the number of deaths at the peak and then the peak date. And then if we wanted to, we could arrange that um, by the peak date. And so now, again, we're getting that order that we got before, but now we can read it off. And this might be something that you might want to put in a table. So if you were using Knitter, uh, you could do cable, and then it's going to format it in something that turns into a nice table when you, uh, when you render your document to HTML or to Word or to PDF. And so again, we can see these ideas that our peak date is earlier in like Norway, Israel, Portugal. These were all those places that were kind of still their, their peak death in terms of all, all deaths was dominated by those seasonal patterns that look like. So that was happening earlier. And then getting into some of the European countries that had an earlier peak in the spring in deaths and then like the United States and then some of the South American countries. All right, I think that's all I'm going to do for looking at this right now, but hopefully that's given you another example of taking a, a new data set and exploring it a little bit and going through to create some of these plots using the types of tools that we've talked about in the class so far.